Hi guys, Jordan from PMP Campers. Just going to do your hand with a video on your Rymor Catamarano. It's a 2005 55 plate model and based on the Ford Transit in diamond white. So on the left hand side, we've got the air filter box just inside there. Brake and clutch fluid just here in this reservoir attached to the servo behind it. The engine oil filling point is this point just here at the top and you can probably see engine oil has been changed and is nice and clean engine oil with dipstick power steering fluid in this reservoir just here diesel fuel filter sits just there at the back engine coolant in this reservoir here at the top right and your washer fluid in this one just here um, if you want to jump start the vehicle you've got a positive terminal just here does tell you this one here you've got a positive terminal on there and basically your earthing point is the engine hoist and wherever that is it should be down here there you go so that's the engine hoist so that is your um earthing point or your negative terminal for jump starting um so that is about it for under the bonnet inside the passenger door there's not a huge amount to show you to be honest um, apart from the fact that you have got a aux socket there. Your diesel filling point is this one just down here and you will need your ignition key to get that open. The fresh water filling point is from this cap just here and it's just there on the near side. Huge locker on the near side at the back which you can lift up this bed like this and lock it into place with these little lock uh, sections just there. So you can have that all the way up and have this as a massive garage if you wanted to. Um, but somebody at some point has obviously done that themselves. At the rear, um, just sorting out the rear door. It's just literally two screws to take it out. But this lo little locker here, you've got the battery charger and power supply unit. That's that one there and your leisure battery just down there below that. Underneath you've got the um, twin waste tanks, both in the open position at the moment. But like I said, that is your waste tanks. This vent just here is for your boiler um, and heating. So if you wanted to double check that it was definitely working, you can put your hand underneath that and get nice hot air pumping out through there. Toilet cassette locker there and to take the toilet cassette out lift up on the little yellow tab there and pull the whole thing towards you to actually empty it out twist this little cap off and you can take that off just like that once you've emptied it out whilst holding down the little yellow button you can fill the thing back up with a cap full of the blue fluid and then push it all the way back in hookup point is this one just here next to these fridge vents so if you wanted to hook the van up on the mains which will give you access to the uh, any 240 volt appliances and the battery charger then that is how you do that there and then as i said you've got the fridge vents just here if you've got the fridge lit up on gas you will be able to feel a bit of warm air coming out through the top of this little vent on the top uh, cover here um, which i do at the moment so i can feel nice warm air coming out of that and the last locker is the gas locker here. You can see you've got two spaces for these gas bottles here, so you can have two of those in there. Um, at the moment, you've just got the one, uh, but this is a full bottle. Anti-clockwise round to the left turns these bottles on, and clockwise round to the right turns them off. You need to make sure that you turn it off before you start driving, and obviously turn it on before you start trying to use the appliances. In the actual cab, It's all pretty straightforward, to be honest. Um, you've got the original double din sized uh, factory fitted stereo system there with the CDs um, and obviously radio and all that sort of stuff. Air conditioning from this switch just here, which to be honest, on this age of transit is pretty rare now. Um, they didn't come with that as standard. That would have been an optional extra. Um, hazard warning lights from the switch just up there. So it's a five-speed manual gearbox, reverse is down, 
to the bottom right. When you put it into reverse, um, you can use this reversing camera down here. It's a little bit old school, but it still works. Um, there you go. So uh, the washers and wipers are on this right-hand stalk here. Um, your lights, side lights, and then main beam are on this little knob over here on the right. Electric windows. And what else have we got? Anything else? I think that's about it, really. Unless I've missed anything out, I don't think I have. Um, right, so we'll just point out to you as well that you've got the uh, chassis plate, Rymore chassis plate there, um, which is the one that you need to go off, really. Um, so it's three and a half tons, which is good. Right. So on the inside, same for the cab, to be honest, it's all pretty straightforward. There's not sort of anything really technical about it. There's nothing sort of, you know, too difficult to explain. So it should be a nice quick video. Um, the control panel over your head as soon as you walk in is really, really simple. You've literally got two switches on and off. The one on the left hand side turns on the water pump. The one on the right hand side turns on all the lights uh, or at least gives power to all the lights. So if you come in the van, turn both of those on, assuming that you've got water in the fresh water tank, you can come over here to the tap and just make sure that you've got water in the, in the sort of pipes and in the boiler. So pull the tap, the pump starts running straight away, which is a good sign. So we've got no air in the system on the, on the cold side. And no air in the system on the hot side. So doing that proves to me that the boiler is full of water and that there's no air in the system. So once you've got that, you know, once you're sure of that, you can then go ahead and use the boiler exactly as you want to um, and not think twice about it. Reason you have to do that, just in case you weren't aware, is that the boiler, if you haven't got any water in the boiler, then essentially if you try and light it up, it's going to overheat because there's no water in it to actually heat up. So you need to make sure that it's actually full just by doing that, what I've done there. Um, and that'll just give you, you know, enough of a kind of, it'll give you enough of a sort of chance to know that it's definitely working and full of water before you start lighting it up and causing any sort of problems. Um, so yeah, that's that. You can leave that one on if you want to, but if it's up to me, I would always just switch it off um, purely for the fact that if for whatever reason the pump was running on, but really quietly, it would end up burning itself out if it was left on. So if you're not using the pump, I would just turn it off. This little button just here, uh, I thought it showed you the levels. Perhaps it doesn't. Well, anyway, so above that, you've got the electric hookup light just there. And if your waste tank is completely full, then this little light will light up as well to tell you to empty it out. Um, we'll have a little look at that, see if I can get that to come to life, because I'm pretty sure that should be showing us the uh, voltage in the leisure battery there. Anyway, uh, in the meantime, you've got this little cupboard just here with various sort of extras in it. I mean, the to be honest, this is all just from a previous owner. Um, just thought we'd leave it in there for you if you wanted to use it. Two burner hob at the top here. You will need an igniter to light either of these two up. They just don't come with ignition. Um, typical for sort of like, you know, continental vehicles, German, Italian, uh, not to come with the igni ignition. Um, underneath there is the fridge. So it's a three-way fridge and it's a Dometic fridge. Um, Dometic pretty much make all of the fridges to be fair uh, on the motorhomes. Um, so really simple to use, but you do need to sort of know how to. Um, essentially the way that you have to work these fridges is either you need to get it cold first either via the gas which is on now or the 240 volt or 230 volt which is uh, when you've got the electric hookup plugged in so those two are the only ways that this fridge will get cold by itself from scratch um, so you know for example if you're going to go on holiday to holiday tomorrow morning I might recommend to you either lighting it up on gas the night before and then leaving it till the morning or selecting 240 volt and having the hookup plugged in overnight, um, which would be my preference anyway, because if you have the hookup plugged in overnight and leave it on mains, your leisure battery is getting a good charging up and the fridge will be really cold by the morning as well. So hopefully that makes sense. 
as long as the hookup's plugged in, if you want to use the mains one there, you literally just select it and it'll light up green and that's it. You just leave it and it'll get cold. The last one there that says 12 volt, a little bit different in the sense that it only works when you're um, physically running the engine. Um, and all that it actually does is it keeps the fridge cold to whatever temperature you've already got it to with one of the other two, um, if that makes sense. So the reason or the way that that works is that when you start the engine up, obviously the alternator under the bonnet charges up the engine battery like any car or van does. But you've got what's called a split relay or a split charger, which essentially splits off that power between the alternator and the engine battery, sends some of it back to the leisure battery to keep the leisure battery topped up whilst you're driving, and also sends a little bit of power here to the fridge. So that means that you can leave it on 12 volt there and essentially the engine is powering the fridge to stay cold whilst you drive. So the 12 volt one is just for when you're driving and you need to have pre-cooled it. The only other one I wanna show you is the gas. So quite literally, all you have to do to use it on the gas is this. And that's it. It will light up by itself. And as long as you've got a solid amber light in there, it tells you that it's working. If the amber light was flashing, it tells you that it hasn't quite lit just yet. Um, and then assuming that you've got the gas switched on in the cupboard, just turn it off and turn it back on again. Um, and it should light up second go round if it doesn't first time. So that is the fridge. Either way the, the you want to get the fridge cold, whether it be gas or the mains there, um, you do have to sort of, you know, leave it for about three or four hours at the very least to actually get cold. Um, you know, it's the same of all the motorhome fridges. In fact, the same of all fridges. If you think even with a household fridge, when you get a new fridge at home, it doesn't just get cold within half an hour, you know. So it will take a good three or four hours. Um, but uh, as I said, that's quite normal. So that is the fridge. Down here under this cupboard, we've got the um, gas isolating points there. So to isolate either the top one, which is the two burners, the middle one, which is the fridge, or the bottom one, which is the boiler, all you have to do is just turn it 90 degrees so that it's facing hor uh, vertical as opposed to horizontal like it is now, because they're all in the on position at the moment and allowing gas to the pipes. At the back there, we've got your um, 240 volt trip switch, because that's literally the back of the um, uh, inlet point. So that's what that is. And so if you ever need to get in there to double check that it was definitely on, that's where you'd go for that. Bathroom, nice and simple. Um, really good size bathroom though, to be fair. You've got the same tap just here, pretty much as you have in the kitchen. So cold to the right, hot to the left. The toilet, couldn't be much more simple. Press the little blue button here to get your flush fluid pumping around the actual toilet and then pull on the handle to the right to drain it into the cassette. Pull the handle back, closes the flap back over and that is it. The shower, oh, there's literally nothing to show you really in the shower, it's so simple. It's just literally uh, the same tap as in the kitchen again, hot and cold left and right. So that is all pretty straightforward. The only other bit really to show you, um, to be honest, is the boiler controls. Um, I will point out that the, um, the fresh water tank sits under this seat just here. So if you wanted to drain the boiler, uh, sorry, drain the fresh tank out, you will need to just move these bits out of the way. You will need to take this cap off and there'll be a bung in there. Look. So that's the bit that's laying down flat like that. And so to take that bung out, you lift the handle up and just pull it out. And that's how you drain out the fresh tank. Water pump's just there, sat on top of the tank. So it's all nice and easy to get to. And that is that. So I just thought I'd show you that. Pop this back where it was. Okay. Um, Right, let's have a look, see if there's anything else in any top cupboards before I show you the last bit. Nope. Okay, 
so in this wardrobe here we've just got loads of uh, paperwork really not much else just loads and loads of storage and then down here in this bottom cupboard is where the actual boiler is so i'll just get down so the actual boiler itself is pretty straightforward pretty simple um, all you've got is this little blue knob just here when you turn that so it's in line with the pipe it will drain out all the water from inside the boiler so that's what you would need to do in winter if you were going to sort of um, not going to use the van over winter you need to drain the boiler out from that point just there and then when you come to filling it back up again or using the van again just turn it back to that point there and fill it back up by pulling the tap like I showed you at the beginning um, but the way to actually use it is from this little dial here so it's a Trumatic C, which means it's a, what they call a combi boiler. So basically, you this is all gas only, by the way. No electric function on it uh, whatsoever. So you go up one or up two to heat the water up at either 40 or 60 degrees. So you just leave that for sort of 10 seconds or so and you'll hear it light up. So if we just wait for that a second. Any minute now. There you go. So hopefully you heard that on the video. But that is, you know, they're so quiet. Um, but that's the uh, the boiler lighting up. So after about half an hour or so, you'll have nice hot water at all your taps. If you don't want hot water, but you do want heating, you go down one to this one just here, which is heating only. So again, it will light up any second now, and then, you know, start pumping the warm air around through all of these little vents here. And if you go all the way down to the bottom, you've got heating and hot water. And so self-explanatory, you'll get heating and hot water at the same time. So you'll get the, the hot air pumping around to all the vents and you'll get hot water at all your taps. So that is honestly as, you know, technical, technical as it gets really, it's, um, really really straightforward back to the middle turns the whole thing off that's it so just close that locker back up so the bed's up here um, again very simple if you don't want to use the bottom bunk there you can have it up all the time and locked into these little bits here as I showed you on the outside um, but the top bunk here is fixed um, so if you want to use, you know, use that as an actual bed, you can leave it at the top there. These little bits for the ladder, basically just hook in to these, just stop it from wiggling around. And that's it really. The skylights, again, super easy. You just basically twist it and that opens or closes the skylight. And then once you've got it down, you've got these little things here to push into like that. So stop it from unwinding windows or the blinds sorry simple again lift up with squeezing these two in to lift up the uh, blackout blind there and then you've got the fly screen which attaches by this little clip so if you want just the fly screen go all the way down to the bottom with the top one just the blackout there you go So hopefully that's all made sense. Um, and also I hope that I kind of explained it everything, explain everything as I, you know, as good as I could. Um, this bed part at the top does pull all the way forwards so that you can lay both of the mattress pieces down and make it this absolutely massive over cab bed if you want to. If you don't want to use that overcab bed, then again, you don't need to. Same sort of thing with this section here. You don't have to use it as a bed. You can leave this as it is. Or if you want to make it into the bed, you... Uh, what do you do? Probably drop... Yeah, so the table drops down and fills this gap, basically. Um, and then once you've done that, you put all the cushions together, which makes your other bed there. Um, but yeah, so... Fingers crossed everything made sense if there's anything you think i've missed out or anything you'd like going over again just let us know but otherwise look forward to seeing you soon to catch your van thanks very much